Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers. And in this video, we're going to show you how you can get data from Spark into Appraise It Pro made by SFRET. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, I've already loaded a bunch of data into Spark here. You can see I've got a subject, my comps. There's other videos showing how to do that. So I'm not gonna get into that all that here. You can check out those videos. But I just wanted to show you that we've got a subject, we've got comps. I actually loaded in a few REO listings just to show you how other addenda go into an Appraise It Pro report. I also did the cost approach for the subject. I did a site extraction to help me with my opinion of site value. And I did a market analysis and I've got some charts and comments going into the report as well. And just so you know, it also works with our trend dashboard. So if you don't wanna use the 1004MC, you can click right here use our trend dashboard and this will go into your appraise it pro report okay so now we've got all the data loaded in let's go ahead and get it over into appraise it pro so i'm going to click export and you choose the options that you want here these are specific to appraise it pro you can decide where you want comments to go for example the prior transfer history for the subject and comps do you want that to go in the fannie mae form itself or do you want that in the additional comments area that's what you can choose uh, that's what you can use these check boxes for here. And then down here, where do you want the comments? Do you want them in a separate text addenda or in the 1004MC itself? And then lastly, where what kind of charts do you want? We have large and medium with comments. And I'll show you the medium with comments here as we load in. So let's go ahead and do it. Also, just so you know, if you haven't used Spark before, you can apply time adjustments. You just click here, you type in the number you want it to be. Now I just typed in 1.00, none of the data actually supports that, but is just an example here and you can make your op choices down here as well as far as rounding and whether you want to use contract date or sale date etc okay let's go ahead and do it i'm going to hit go now spark is preparing the data and then once this is done it's ready to load into appraise it pro but then it's also going to ask you if you want to download the digital work file and i would definitely recommend you do that at least one time if not every time but at least one time so you can look at it and kind of see exactly what spark is going to give you in that digital work file so i'm going to go ahead and hit go here to download that um, you can also just cancel it but for now we're set we've got our file down here so i'm using google chrome and chrome and edge will typically put the files down here in firefox they'll be up in a little downloads button they'll also most likely unless you've changed your default settings for your internet browser they'll most likely be in your downloads folder on your computer as well so you can go directly to your downloads folder like this or you can just click right here so if i want to just load this data into a brand new appraise it pro report that i haven't even created yet all i do is i click this and, and it opened up in a different area give me one second and i'll drag it down here we go all right so let's see this should be it right here okay so you can see the report here loaded in some subject info, the listing history. Now, one thing to keep in mind, Spark does not automatically decide what boxes to check. I had to go and do that. So back when I was in Spark, in fact, let me just show you here. When I was in Spark, I had to go and manually check these boxes. Spark does not check those for you. We believe that's part of the appraiser's job to form their opinion and make those choices there with the checkbox. So anyways, all right. Let's go back. So you check, check those boxes. We got low, high, predominant, a little information here, little information here. We've got the comps, top of page two filled out. We've got the transfer history information. It does say, see additional comments. So I could have had the, the comments go right in here, but I chose to have them go on the additional comments page. So just so you know, that'll be over here in your extended comments. You can see it right here. I'll pop it open real quick, just so you can take a look. And this is what, Spark will load in. So the subject 36 month transfer history and then any transfer history 12 months for the comps. And by the way, you can customize that. If you uh, wanted to go back further than 12 months for the comps, that's fine. It's all customizable in Spark. Also has the REO listing history or transfer history in here, I should say. And um, But you can don't have to include that if you don't want to. That's just a setting I have turned on. Okay, back to the report. Uh, let's see, where were we? Down here. So we've got the transfer history, and then I did do the cost approach, and I formed my opinion of site value based on extraction. So it has that comment in here, all that good stuff. Let's see what else we have. So I'm going to go comps four to six. 
we've got that in there. By the way, um, with Spark, your limit for comps is 30, so you can load up to 30. I know that's a lot, but our, our limit actually used to be 15, and appraisers complained and wanted more, so we made it 30. Here's those REO listings. Got that addenda in here. There are a couple different REO listing addenda you can choose from, so that's a setting in Spark you can change. We have the 1004MC filled out. We've got some charts with the associated commentary in there. And the charts are all customizable, and so are the comments. So don't worry about that if you don't like how certain charts look, if you don't like scatter plots or bar charts or whatever, you can customize all that, including the colors. Uh, we got the photos for the subject. And keep in mind, again, these are just the photos straight from Google. Unfortunately, we do not have the MLS photos. We just have the Google Street View. Same with the comps. And it looks like that's about it. We also have the ARIA listing photos. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how you load in data into a brand new, fresh, never before created Appraise It Pro report. Now I'm going to show you how to load it into a report you already have open. So let's go ahead and close this. And let me open this. So here's a report I already have open. Now let's say it was a, a template or a skeleton and you already had some data pre-filled out in here, that'd be fine. What you do is you click on home and then you click import forms. So I'm gonna click that and then it's gonna pop up this window and you click browse and you need to find the file that Spark downloaded to your computer. It's gonna be called report. And you can see the most recent one, just did it now and I can click that and Keep in mind, unless you choose to save it somewhere manually, it should be in your downloads folder. So if you need help finding it, just scroll up, click on downloads, and it should be there. So I'm going to click on that. It's called an RPTI file, and then you click open. Now it's going to pop open, verify, do you want all these forms to go into the report? These are the ones that Spark is going to load in. Just verify that, and you can choose to always overwrite repeatable forms so forms like photo pages or whatever or you can choose to create new ones and you can also choose to overwrite populated fields now be careful with this what this means is if i choose overwrite populated fields appraise it pro is going to allow spark to overwrite any data in your report if it's a field that spark is going to load into so for example property address if you load in a subject Spark's going to overwrite the address field. Spark doesn't ever touch, for example, the highest and best use data. So if you have something there, Spark won't overwrite it no matter what, because Spark never touches highest and best use. Um, but if it's a field Spark is going to touch, it will overwrite it if you choose this option. If you do not choose that option, what that means is Spark will only be allowed to load in data into fields that are completely empty. So as long as the field is totally empty, no spaces in it, nothing, just totally empty, then Spark will be allowed to load into it. So that's great if you use templates, you have data pre-populated only in a few fields and you don't want Spark to mess with those, then you use this option where you do not let Spark overwrite the populated fields. And then if you are going to have Spark load in time adjustments, you can click that, load in those. I'll go ahead and click it since we are. And since this is a pretty much a blank report, it doesn't matter whether I choose this or not and if you want to include extended comments. So I'll turn that on and that on, and then you just hit import. And then if you chose to overwrite, this dialog will pop up saying, are you sure you want to overwrite data in your report? Choose yes. And there we go. So we got the data loaded in, and this was into a report that already existed. And there you go. Same thing, all the data. I won't go in and show you everything, but all the data is in there, including you can see the time adjustments that were made based on the percentage that you chose or calculates it and puts it in there. Also, all the math regarding these adjustments goes into your digital work file as well. I won't get into the digital work file because that's it could make this video much longer. And I still have one more thing I want to show you. So the one other thing you may want to do is, let's say, what do we have in here? We have six comps. Let's say there's two or three more that you just want to tack on to the end. How do you do that? So let me show you. It is a little bit different than if you have used Spark in any other form filler. So just watch this part if that's something you're interested in learning. What you do is you go back to Spark, which I'll do here, and I'm just gonna hit start over and I'm just gonna pick today and I'm just gonna load in a few comps. So let's see, my Arizona, I'm in Arizona by the way, 
in the armless MLS. So I'm just loading in three comps. Let's say you needed to go in, add three more comps to a report that already has comps in it. You don't want to overwrite the old comps. You just want to add more. So what you can do is load those into Spark. There we go. We've got three in there. You hit export and then you hit go just like before. Nothing different. And so now we've got, I'm going to hit go on the work file as well. So now we've got this new RPTI file. It's report three. So what I do now is back in that report, instead of clicking home and then import forms, I click home and then click import comparables. And what this does is it tacks those comps onto the end of your grid. So right now I have six comps. So it's going to make these seven, eight, and nine. So let's go ahead and do it. Click import comparables browse and i'm going to choose that newest file i just got which is that one hit open it's going to say here are your comps are you good with that and i hit import i do not want to overwrite import and now there we go we have comps seven eight and nine all right, that's it. I think that's everything I wanted to show you. If you have any interest in checking out exactly what we put into the digital work file, what all you have in there to kind of help support everything, then check out the description below and I will have a link in there to a video that talks just about that. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you like it.